Welcome to the five-game win streak edition of Between the Lines presented by Continental Diamond. Ben, I think we have enough fingers to count that out, yeah, right? Yeah, One, two, three. That's five wins. No in matter, a row. In a row. In a row. In a row. And this is the most interesting season I have been a part of, just being a Minnesota Vikings employee, just understanding the nature of the adversity that this team has faced. But when you look at just this five-game win streak, now with Josh Dobbs under center, what stands out to you? I mean, our, KOC's ability to, to adapt. Yeah. I mean, our adaptability, whether it's the, the defense that we knew that was going to take some time to, like, get up and running and, you know, really feel like it's true ownership of this defense, you know, we had to adapt to that change, and now they're playing at a high, le high level. You look at all the injuries and all the things that happened on, on offense, and it's, you know, your number one receiver, you've got your running back out, you've got linemen out, and then your quarterbacks go out, like, and they still have this ability to just rise up. Mm. You know, it's one thing to, in a cliche fashion, be like, oh, next man up. Right. Next man up. Right. JJ's been out, and we've been run, We've been winning. You know, Jaron Hall goes <laughs> out. Crazy. Jaron Hall goes out, and Dobbs steps in last week. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Jaron actually looked good. Right. He looked great when he was in the game last week in Atlanta, you know, in for Kirk Cousins. So it just seems like no matter what happens to this team, they are battle-tested. Yeah, the Josh Dobbs 30 for 30 in a few years is going to be <laughs> crazy. <laughs> just seeing that story of him coming here last uh, Tuesday and now going 2-0 as a Minnesota Vikings quarterback, you can't make that up. But as the kids would say, Kevin O'Connell was in his bag today. When it comes yeah. to creativity, being able to do wildcat runs or play action passing or just find ways to get jo put Josh Dobbs in the best position possible, you can't make this up. You talked to Kevin O'Connell post game. What were some of his thoughts on just the offensive performance today in the first half in particular? You know, he's just so proud of how his group always responds. Um, you know, that first half was just incredible and, um, you know, he just gives, you know, of course he deflects and gives a lot of credit to the players and all of his, obviously his other coaches. And we all know that he's kind of the mastermind right. behind all of it, but very, very humble in how the team performed. You know, he did say, like, look, we got we to gotta figure some things out because, um, you know, the second half just wasn't, wasn't up to their standard. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're going to figure out how they can better execute and make it a complete game. You know, yeah. that's the one thing. He's like, I'm, I'm hunting for that first complete yeah. game. So we, we play perfect uh, on offense for all four quarters. So... That's still the elusive thing, but they did enough to win this game. They did enough defensively to hold on to this game and, and seal really the victory uh, in the fourth quarter. But look, man, he the way that he's able to use now quarterback design, quarterback yeah. run game. Yeah. You know, we we had a, a crucial third down where it 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 was a it was a fake to tie, mm -hmm. and then tie pivots, yeah. yep. and then he's the lead blocker. Mm -hmm. You're not getting that with Kirk nope. Cousins, and for them to implement. <laughs> implement that sort of play, you know, in the short time that he's been here is phenomenal. Phenomenal to say the least. I want to continue to talk about just Kevin O'Connell's play calling. In particular, I counted 11 times in the first half where the Vikings rushed up to the line of scrimmage with about 30 seconds left on the play clock. Mm -hmm. Josh Dobbs gets to the line of scrimmage, looks over at Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell's making play calls and saying, no, check it here. Yeah. Little do fans know, at the 15-second mark, that's when the head coach and the quarterback cannot communicate. So those 15 to 20 seconds from 35 to 15. How key is that when it comes to getting a starting quarterback, his second game as a, as a quarterback here, prepared to go make a play? It's everything. Okay. I mean, it, it's everything. I mean, he, he's, he's not only just calling the play, he's also telling him, like, hey, here's an alert. Mm. By the way, you know, this is what you're going to get out as far as the routes on this side and on the other side, this is, these are the routes. And, oh, by the way, Look Look for this mm. defensively if we get this overload or this overhang or we see this safety cheating down. You know, it's a little bit – it turns into a little bit like college football where the quarterbacks can get to the line. They can look to see. Mm -hmm. They can they can figure out the coaches, oh, they want me to They want me to throw over here because of leverage. Gotcha. They can do a little bit of that. If, if we don't have that, that ability to communicate, that one-way communication from coach to quarterback – this would be a whole different ballgame. It's an absolute game changer. I love it, and I love the fact that Josh Dobbs only continues to get more comfortable in this offense. People are speaking of someone that's getting comfortable with this defense, Brian Flores. Whew. This Minnesota Vikings defense in the past five games have forced 11 turnovers. The first five, only three turnovers. What do you make of just this Brian Flores-led defense that's finally figured out how to give the ball back to its offense? Well, and how many times, how many times have we seen – uh, our safeties and corners be in a position to make a play, right. and for one reason or another, they don't they don't come down with the interception. Yep. So that's the thing that I think is so great about this defense and the way our guys are performing. We're hitting our landmarks. Mm -hmm. They're doing exactly what Flores wants them to do. I mean, 
they they might be in the in, in the deep half of the field. The ball gets thrown right to them yeah. because they're they're playing they're playing their job. They're playing with discipline. They're not getting faked out by what the offense is doing or this and that. And they're not biting the cheese. And they're, they're playing disciplined football. And for the most part, it's paying off. And the, and the big thing is for me, look. Harrison Phillips has been playing really well yeah. these last couple of games. You know, our defensive line in general, DJ Wanham, yep. he's playing amazing. He's getting overshadowed yep. by Daniel. by a defensive M- MVP candidate and Daniil Hunter. Yep. But let's keep in mind, Wanham is playing his butt off right now. So you get those three guys up front along with all the other guys mixed in there to create pressure, yep. uh, to create this illusion of pressure where you get Josh, Josh Metellus multiple times on a, as a free rusher yep. because the offense is confused. I mean, DJ Wanham, six sacks in the last five games. Daniil Hunter, like you said, could be a defensive MVP, MVP candidate leading the NFL in sacks. But just as a team, as a collective, during this five-game win streak, Ben, you've been on the sideline every single game. What's changed as far as vibe, energy, emotion from the first five to this past five? I don't think you ever see anybody in a bad situation, whether the offense, you know, go back to last week, uh, turn the ball over. You know, Dobbs, you know, had you know, put the ball on the ground a couple times. You never see this collective, like, shoulder, like, oh, here we go again. Yep. Like, oh. Yep. They, ne- they never get down. The defense, they just grab their helmet, lunch pail mentality. They're like, all right, now they get to go work and hopefully get the ball back. I just think that. Again, all the adversity that they've handled the last, uh, you know, at the start of the season, has prepared them for these moments where, hey, they know they got to go a job to go do, regardless of what the the other side of the ball is doing. They got to go out and perform at a high level, and they're there to pick each other up, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. Uh, make that three straight games. I'm going to end it with this. Make it three straight games that T.J. Hawkinson and Jordan Addison have combined for over 200 receiving yards. That is something that goes on. I mean, that goes unnoticed, but at the same time, when Justin Jefferson, the best receiver in the NFL, doesn't play in your last five games, you need someone to step up, and T.J. Hawkinson did that today. J.J. is on the mend. This offense is also on the mend. So if you're Kevin (laughs) O'Connell, how do you fit J.J. into this offense that's won five games without him? Well, and you got to think with the uh, the progress that KJ had, you know, this yeah. course of this last week, very scary yeah. concussion that he suffered. They're like, man, he bounced back really well. I mean, there was even a talk that maybe he's going to come back for this game. Mm-hmm. Most likely he'll be back for that game. So now we have a full complement of wide receivers mm-hmm. out there. I don't know, dude. I, <laughs> I, I've, you know, I kind of feel bad for what Denver has to prepare for at this point in time because there's, there's already a lot of weapons that we have with yep. JJ being out, guys stepping up. Um, now you get – you just pick your poison, guys. Who, who, who are you going to double? Who are you going to guard? Right. Critical down the distance? You're going to go JJ? You're going to go Hawkinson? You're going to go KJ? KJ's our third down right. monster. I don't know. Good luck. You didn't even bring up Jordan Addison. You didn't even bring up Jordan <laughs> or Addison. T- or TJ or Ty Chandler. Like, it's, it's yeah. so many weapons. Yeah, so many, so many weapons. And I think, you know, uh, <laughs> KOC crazy. for sure, I think when, when they see the injury report and he gets the progress report on these players, and he, obviously he knows where JJ's at in his recovery, I mean, I'm sure he's just like, oh, the mad <laughs> scientist is going to go to work and he's going to find ways for Dobbs just to, like, just be efficient. Yeah. Don't turn the ball over. Don't get risky, just yeah. like he was today. Wasn't trying to force anything. Right. If it's not there, tuck it and run. Um, that's going to be the same mentality, but now you've got a lot more weapons and a superstar athlete that's coming back on the field. Well, the win streak continues, but the Vikings have to wait one more day to, to figure out if the Denver Broncos beat the Buffalo Bills or lost to the Buffalo Bills. That game is on Monday Night Football. But next Sunday, Sunday Night Football, prime time, Denver Broncos, Mile High City. Man, this just makes for another great Minnesota Vikings game. So for Vin Lieber, my name is Gabe Henderson. Thank you guys for tuning into the five-game five win streak edition of Between the Lines presented by Continental Diamond.